these services on Christmas. So today we thought we would just come to you from in front of the fire by the Christmas tree and uh, just share from our heart about the time of celebration and victory and the wondrous gift that God has given to us through Jesus Christ. Praise God. We're going to read today from Luke's Gospel, the second chapter. Um, we'll be reading all the way down to the uh, 20th verse in this chapter. And I just want you to listen and then ponder as we speak these things of uh, joy, of glory, and of the redemption of man. And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. This taxing was first made with Cyrenus that was governor of Syria. And all went to be taxed, every one to his own city. And Joseph also went out from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth, into Judea, unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. And it was so that while we were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son, and wrapped him in swaddling clothes, and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign to you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. And it came to pass as the angels were gone away from them into heaven, and the shepherds said one to another, Let us go even unto Bethlehem and see this thing which has come to pass, which the Lord hath made known to us. And they came with haste, and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. And when they had seen it, they made known abroad the saying which was told them concerning this child. And all they that heard it wondered at those things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary kept them in all things and pondered them in her heart. And the shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen as it was told unto them. You know, this was a time of great uh, angst. On the earth, the Roman Empire had conquered uh, much of this part of the world. Uh, Israel, the Jews, were living under Roman bondage and captivity, um, in basically in slavery to the Roman Empire. And then the taxing was given to, to support Rome and the, you know, the government of Rome and all the things that it did, uh, not because they wanted to, but by constraint. Uh, they had just suffered so long, so much. Uh, the uh, priesthood had become a political system. And was no longer uh, serving the people for the things of God. Yet in the midst of all this, with thousands of years of prophecy and thousands of prophecies uh, about the coming Messiah, Yeshua HaMashiach, God at this time, at this select time, in the fullness of times, sent forth his son. Not to remain as a babe in the manger, but to redeem mankind from his sin and to be deliver them from the bondage of captivity and from Satan. And so this, is, this event uh, took on great meaning, and the shepherds were joyous because God said he had sent the Savior. Uh, after the eight days when he was circumcised and taken to the temple, there was a, a prophetess there who, uh, God, who began to speak over the child, and uh, another man there that uh, the Lord had shown him he would not see death until he saw his Messiah. Jesus came at a critical time. He came at a time when uh, the entire world, the crossroads was uh, through the Middle East to the entire world, the trade routes all went through there, and there God brought forth his son so that the message of redemption could be spread throughout all the world. God wanted mankind to know that he had not forgotten them. Just as when the Jews were in captivity for 400 years and Moses uh, came before the Lord, and God said, I have heard the cry of my people. And he knew that. For 400 years they had cried up unto him. And he raised up a deliverer. And for thousands of years, man had suffered and pined in uh, the bondage of satanic authority and Satan's ruling over the earth and ruling over mankind. And yet God, in this fullness of time, sent Jesus to bring a deliverance 
and bring a freedom and bring a liberty to humanity. Oh, we're grateful to God. And it's as the shepherds did, they glorified God. They worshiped and praised God. There was excitement and joy about what they had seen and what they had come to know. Yet the Bible tells us that Jesus grew in wisdom and nurture and the stature of the Lord. That he did grow up. He had a ministry of three and a half years on the earth. And then at the end of that, he was crucified and bore the sins of all. He bore our sickness. He bore our sin. He bore the, the uh, curse of the law and carried it to the cross and was raised from the dead for our justification. Like I preached one year, I had a sermon called, um, you know, uh, about the babe grew up. You know, without, without the resurrection, the birth meant nothing. The birth was just another baby being born. But it was the birth of Christ, his, his growing up, his ministry, his going to the cross and paying the price for man's sin and redeeming us to the Father by his own blood that makes this a glorious and spectacular event in the earth. God became flesh, Emmanuel, God with us. And he took on that flesh, and the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory as the only begotten of the Father. We're grateful today that the Word became flesh, that God sent forth his Word and healed us, that God sent forth the Word to walk among us so that man, God could be with his, man, his creation. You know, in the Bible, in 1 John, not 1 John, but in the Gospel of John, 1st chapter, when the Bible says, and the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, that word dwelt means that he tabernacled. He lived and walked among us. God had wanted to move out of that tabernacle made by the hands of men and walk with his people, walk with his creation, have a time of uh, connection with that which he created so that he could bring them to his heart. And so God sent Jesus to dwell among us as God in the flesh. And therefore he went to the cross. He was the last sacrifice. He was raised from the dead and became our justification. And so today I would like to just take this opportunity, first of all, to tell you that uh, we're grateful to have you with us, those of you who join us regularly, those of you that are watching home, from home today instead of being at church with us. Um, we we are, uh, just want to tell you how much we love you, how much we appreciate you. And we just we uh, send forth a uh, blessing and greeting for a very merry and prosperous Christmas that you take the time, and this is what I really would like to say to you, with all the hustle and bustle, with all the eating and all the presents and all the family getting together, uh, I went out yesterday to, I uh, had to get uh, crickets for my son's chameleon uh, mistake. I went into the Target parking lot, and it was like New York City at rush hour. Uh, it was crazy. And so people are just busy, busy, busy uh, being about, you know, uh, the season and not the reason. And, and I know that, you know, that's not every person, but we get so caught up with all the activities. We get caught up with the cooking. We get caught up with the family. We get caught up with wrapping presents. We get caught up with giving. That we cannot lose the sight. We cannot lose the heart of what this celebration, the Christ Mass, the celebration of Christ, really and truly means to humanity. It is God's gift to bring redemption to a lost and hurting world. It is the gift where man was lost without God and without hope outside the covenants of God that God said, I have a plan. John the Baptist said when Jesus came to be baptized, behold the lamb which was slain from the foundation of the world. God put this plan into motion from the very beginning. Because of the fall of man, he knew he would fall. And he had a plan to redeem him, to bring him back to his heart. To not leave man helpless. Not to leave man hopeless. But to give him a hope that would bring him in to the glories of God. That would reconcile him to his father. To the father God. And so as we take the time of today and tomorrow, even the, the following days, let's step back. Let's step away from all the other stuff. Let's begin to think on God. Think on His plan. Honor and praise and worship Him and give thanks to Him that He sent Jesus. That He sent Jesus to redeem you. That He sent Jesus to be the perpetuation for sin for you. That He sent Him so that you could no longer be lost, but that you could be joined to the Father. To the Father. That by the Father and the Son knocking on your door and entering in and supping with you, bringing you life, that newness of life, 
that joy of life that only comes from heaven above, from the heart of the Father. So have a wonderful, precious, blessed, and Merry Christmas. And know this, that God loves you, Jesus loves you, the Holy Spirit loves you, and we here at Faith and Victory Church love you. And thank God for you, all of our family out there. We thank God for you being a part of us all this year and for the past years. We thank God that you are a blessing in the kingdom of God. Go share the truth with people. When you're with your family, be light. Be the light of the world because Jesus lives in your heart. Until we see you again, uh, may God bless you. May you walk in the blessings of God. And remember this, this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. God bless you and Merry Christmas.